Jack pointed down. That's where we landed. Beyond falls and cliffs, there was a gash visible in the trees. There were the splintered trunks and then the drag, leaving only a fringe of palm between scar and sea. There too, jutting into the lagoon was the platform with insect-like figures moving near it. Ralph sketched a twining line from the bald spot on which they stood down a slope, a gully through flowers round and down to the rock where the scar started. That's the quickest way back. Eyes shining, mouths open, triumphant. They savored the right of domination. They were lifted up, were friends. Again, look at the connotation and tone of these words here. They're triumphant. They dominate. They're friends. Okay? This idea of domination and owning this island is important as well as we talk about human nature and, um, and I don't know, human nature. Okay? There's no village and no boats, said Ralph wisely. We'll make sure later, but I think it's uninhabited. We'll get food, cried Jack. Hunt, catch things until they fetch us. Simon looked at them both, saying nothing, but nodding till his black hair flopped backwards and forwards. His face was glowing. Ralph looked down the other way, where there was no reef. Steeper, said Jack. Ralph made a cupping gesture. That bit of forest down there, the mountain holds it up. Every point of the mountain held up trees, flowers and trees. Now the forest stirred, roared, flailed. The nearer acres of rocks, rock flowers fluttered. For half a minute, the breeze blew cool on their faces. Ralph spread his arms, all ours. They laughed and tumbled and shouted on the mountain. I'm hungry. When Simon mentioned his hunger, the others became aware of theirs. Come on, said Ralph. We found out what we wanted to know. They scrambled down a rock slope, dropped among flowers, and made their way under the trees. Here they paused and examined the bushes around them curiously. Simon spoke first. Like candles, candle bushes, candle buds. The bushes were dark evergreen and aromatic, and the mini buds were waxen green and folded up against the light. Jack slashed at one with his knife, and the scent spilled over them. Candle buds. You couldn't light them, said Ralph. They just look like candles. Green candles, said Jack contemptuously. We can't eat them. Come on. They were in the beginning of the thick forest, plonking with weary feet on a track when they heard the noises, squeakings, and the hard strike of hoofs on the path. As they pushed forward, the squeaking increased till it became a frenzy. They found a piglet caught in a curtain of creepers throwing itself at the elastic traces in all the madness of extreme terror. Its voice was thin, needle-sharp, and insistent. The three boys rushed forward, and Jack drew his knife again with a flourish. He raised his arm in the air. There came a pause, a hiatus. The pig continued to scream, and the creepers to jerk, and the blade continued to flash at the end of a bony arm. The pause was only long enough for them to understand what an enormity the downward stroke would be. Then the piglet tore loose from the creepers and scurried into the undergrowth. They were left looking at each other in the place of terror. Jack's face was white under the freckles. He noticed that he still had the, held the knife aloft and brought his arm down, replacing the blade in the sheath. Then all three laughed ashamedly and began to climb back to the track. So this is an important scene because despite all of their talk about being tough and owning things, owning the island and hunting and killing, they're really not ready to kill a living animal. This is a huge deal. It talks about the enormity of what the downward stroke of that knife would be. So right now they're still too civilized for this type of violence. Essentially Jack wimps out and the pig gets away but that's not the kind of person Jack wants to be seen as. So we're gonna see him overcompensating for this later. And again, the knife is gonna come back again and again as this symbol of violence and what it means for the boys. I was choosing a place, said Jack. I was just waiting for a moment to decide where to stab him. You should stick a pig, said Ralph fiercely. They always talk about sticking a pig. You cut a pig's throat to let the blood out, said Jack. Otherwise, you can't eat the meat. Why didn't you? They knew very well why he hadn't, because of the enormity of the knife descending and cutting into living flesh, because of the unbearable blood. 
I was going to, said Jack. He was ahead of them and they could not see his face. I was choosing a place. Next time, he snatched his knife out of the sheath and slammed it into a tree trunk. Next time, there would be no mercy. He looked round fiercely, daring them to contradict. But they broke out into the sunlight, and for a while they were busy finding and devouring food as they moved down the scar toward the platform and the meeting. Okay, that is the end of chapter one. Again, make sure you are taking down notes. We talked a lot about characterization, indirect characterization and direct characterization. We met Ralph and Piggy and Jack and Simon and Roger. Uh, we explored the island. We got to see a lot of the setting and the positive connotations and negative connotations of that. The places where the boys are happy and excited and the places that are kind of scary. We saw a number of symbols. We have the conch and the leadership that comes with that. We have Piggy's glasses and the logic and the reasoning and intelligence that goes with those. And we have Jack's knife and the violence and anger that comes along with that. Okay, so you want to make sure to go back and write down some of these things before you forget. And then we'll be moving into chapter two.